Total nutrient content, availability of nutrients, and balance of nutrients can be used along with the soil test and fertilizer recommendation to determine the appropriate rate of cattle manure to apply to meet the uh, crop's need uh, without uh, excessively loading up the soil with nutrient. When it comes to uh, uh, cattle uh, in the field, uh, if you're overwintering cattle in the field, uh, certainly you want to pick a site in the field uh, where the water is going to be contained. Uh, a lot of nutrient can be removed from the uh, uh, overwintering site or pen in water that runs off, especially the snowmelt water in the spring. So you want to try as much as possible to select a site uh, where that runoff water from the pen or from the uh, overwintering site uh, will be contained within the area. The Beef Research School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Well, I think when it comes to managing manure nutrients, the first step is knowing what's in that manure. And really what that involves is getting out and getting a representative sample of the manure before you begin to apply it. And so what you need to do is take a number of samples from the, uh, from the manure that's being moved out of, the, uh, out of the field, ideally before it's applied, and a sample of that manure taken and submitted to a lab. Uh, laboratories will analyze the manure for its total content and oftentimes give you an estimate of the availability of nutrient in that manure. And that information, total nutrient content, availability of nutrients, and balance of nutrients can be used along with the soil test and fertilizer recommendation to determine the appropriate rate of cattle manure to apply to meet the uh, crop's need uh, without uh, excessively loading up the soil with nutrient. Uh, a manure test can give you an idea of what's present in a form, which is the inorganic form that plants can immediately use, and also uh, the amount of nutrient that would be contained in the organic form, uh, which uh, needs to be decomposed uh, in order to be uh, released and made available for plant, plant uptake. And so there, there are ways of, of predicting uh, the, the rate at which a nutrient like nitrogen might become available in a manure source. Uh, things like the carbon to nitrogen ratio can be, can be, uh, can be measured. Uh, generally, it's, it's, it's estimated that anywhere from maybe 10 to 30 or 40 percent of the nitrogen in, in cattle manure is available in the year of application. So there's quite a wide range surrounding that. And uh, again, manure analysis can help you be a little bit more, more precise. For phosphorus, we find that the, you know, the availability of phosphorus in manure is about 50 percent or about half that compared to commercial pea fertilizer. Uh, manures are very good sources of potassium, so there's lots of available potassium in them. Uh, uh, for sulfur, uh, most cattle manures contain adequate amounts of sulfur for, for, for plant growth. One of the things with a lot of cattle manures from Western Canada that, that we've observed where a lot of bedding material is used, straw or wood chips, is that the release of available nitrogen from the manure in the first year or two years following application can be quite slow, such that there may be some benefit in those manures that have a lot of carbon material, a lot of straw, a lot of wood chips associated with them, a high carbon to nitrogen ratio, there may be some benefit of adding some commercial nitrogen fertilizer along with them to compensate for the low N availability in the initial years. And of course we always need to pay special attention in the case of, of manures to the amount of phosphorus that we're adding to the soil over time to avoid loading. Uh, manures oftentimes contain more phosphorus relative to nitrogen than what a crop needs. So the manure supply if the manure is applied to supply all of the nitrogen, typically then there's a lot more phosphorus than what the crop can use. And uh, year after year that uh, residual phosphorus will build up in the soil and can cause potential concerns as far as phosphorus moving in runoff water. So we need to keep an eye on not just the levels of, of nitrogen in the soil and manured soils, but all nutrients, and in particular phosphorus.
One of the things to, to recognize, I think, that's important is that, is that when, you're, uh, when ethanol is being manufactured from a grain, uh, basically uh, the uh, nutrients are left behind in the uh, stillage or the, or the uh, mash. And so when you are feeding uh, distiller's grains to cattle, you're feeding them a material that is enriched in nutrients, like nitrogen and phosphorus. And as a consequence of a higher nitrogen and phosphorus content typical of distiller's grains, so also is the manure that is produced from the cattle higher in nitrogen, higher in phosphorus, and as a consequence uh, 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 those uh, uh, manures should be tested and application rates adjusted accordingly to account for the fact that that manure does have a higher nutrient uh, content. And in particular when that material is further composted it makes for a pretty hot manure in terms of its of its nutrient content and so that needs to be taken into consideration when determining the appropriate application rate and application rates adjusted downward. I think soil testing is important from one standpoint and that is to find out what that soil is lacking in and uh, how the manure can be used to meet that nutrient requirement. Along with what's in the soil, the, new, the manure that you apply is going to supply some additional nutrient uh, to meet the crop's need and in some cases you may also need to supplement that manure with some commercial fertilizer in order to get the balance of nutrients that the, that the crop needs. The soil testing is also important in monitoring what's happening to the soil, particularly soils that have received repeated applications of manure. Uh, for example, watching for buildup of certain nutrient elements like phosphorus in the soil, uh, especially with cattle manure. Uh, also monitoring the soil for uh, salinity, uh, any sodicity issues, uh, as well as organic matter content. Because of course manures, uh, especially cattle manure, uh, are a valuable source of organic matter. So soil testing can be very useful to uh, watch that buildup of organic matter in the soil take place. Uh, composting, one thing it does is that it reduces the volume, uh, it uh, homogenizes the material as well, makes it more uniform, and also to a certain extent stabilizes it uh, so that it's uh, more predictable in its uh, uh, nutrient release characteristics. And also proper composting can do a very good job of getting rid of pathogens and weeds. I think a person wants to strive to, to, to have a well-maintained uh, 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 manure applicator unit uh, that does a good job of uniformly spreading that manure nutrient across the field. Because some of our research work has shown when manure m nutrients are, are not spread uniformly across the field, uh, some of those hot spots, for example, can be contributors to some problems with crop growth, as well as they can be sources of particularly high losses of manure nutrient uh, uh, in the field. So striving for uniformity I think is something that one wants to, to, to work towards. Certainly paying attention to the, to the application rate and also the, the, the method of application as well. Depending on the manure source uh, there can be a fair bit of loss of nitrogen from manure if the manure is just broadcast in the field and allowed to remain on the surface such that incorporation can be an effective way then of, uh, of reducing that nitrogen loss by volatilization. Some other manures on the other hand Though we find, for example, ones that contain lots of straw uh, don't have a particularly high volatilization uh, potential. And so for those manures, you know, maybe there isn't a need for a whole bunch of tillage operations uh, um, and, and perhaps a, a simple, a single incorporation may be enough to, 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 to get that into the soil and reduce those, those losses. Mm -hmm.